professor is Samanda. Um, for my topic, I chose warehousing functionality. A couple things on the agenda for this PowerPoint is what is warehousing, different roles of warehouses, the value added service for distribution center, and major functions of warehouses, and the types of warehouses. What is warehousing? Warehousing is an entity in the supply chain and logistics system that stores and handles materials between the point of origin and the point of consumption. The traditional view most people think of is a warehouse um, is a place to store and hold inventory. Warehousing has several functions. Um, including buffer storage, cross-stocking, replenishing, processing customer orders, consolidation center, and break bulk. What is buffer storage? Buffer storage holds inventory for downstream stages of the supply chain to allow the entire production and distribution network to deal efficiently with the system systematic and random variation in the network operations, helps in managing systemic variations, variations with transportation times, like with bad weather or if there's a lot of traffic. But it also helps with variations in production time due to unreliable operations or suppliers. Seasonal products, such as summer products, like umbrellas and beach chairs or winter products, such as Christmas items, such as lights, stockings, Christmas candy. And the buffer storage will also help a company reduce costs due to batch production, and you're able to save due to the large setup costs. Cross stocking is another. Um, with cross stocking, it's a process where a product is received in a facility, occasionally conjoined with a product going to the same destination then shipped at the earliest opportunity without going into a long-term storage. When utilizing cross-stocking in a warehouse for the process to be successful, it will rely heavily on information technology, which enables faster replenishment, reduce middle and last mile shipping costs by positioning inventory closer to the end customer and better servicing of your end customers. Um, as seen here in the image on the left, the distribution center one, you'll see the full truckloads will have A, B, C, D. They come in, receive, sort, and ship. Um, and if you look at the end where the customers is at the bottom, they'll have full truckloads, but you'll notice the colors. So it's a little bit of truck A, truck B, truck C, and truck D on each and every one of those trucks going out of the shipping to the customers. Um, again, the image on the upper right is before cross docking. You'll see the various colored trucks, A, B, C, D, and you'll see that they have the, um, not a full truckload, and they do jump to all customers, so they're all over the place. But after cross docking, they all go to the main crossing, uh, cross docking DC hub, do their deliveries, and then they all go out into one central location. Types of cross stocking, there's two different main types. The first one is manufacturing cross stocking, in which you'll receive the purchased and inbound products that are required by manufacturing. And the warehouse may also receive products and prepare sub assemblies for the production orders at hand. We also have distribute, um, distributor cross stocking. And then during the distributor cross stocking, you will consolidate any inbound products from different vendors into a mixed product palette and delivered to the customer once all the items have been received. Replenishing is the movement of goods in, um, in large order quantities. For example, a whole pallet at a time from a reserve storage to order picking, to ensure that order picking locations do not become empty. Um, if they do become empty, you may or may not have a hard time filling orders. So that's why we want to make sure that maintaining stock availability is at the top of importance on your list. 
processing customer orders, we need to make sure um, daily and hourly or whenever you're picking uh, that the available item is um, able to ship out. Coordinating order fulfillment with other facilities of the distribution network if you do not have it. Producing the pick list to guide the order picking and the necessary shipping documentation. So we do want to either make sure it's being printed out or as you see in the image, you're able to see it on a handheld device. And scheduling the order picking in the shipping activity. And next we got to the consolidation center. Here, consolidation occurs when a warehouse receives material from several sources and combines them into exact quantities for a specific destination. And there are several benefits to using the consolidation center. Your company will have the lowest possible transportation rate, control the overheads of transportation by reducing the number of shipping and receiving operations your company has. Um, as shown in the image here, we have manufacturer A, B, C, and D. Each one of them has um, their own product on the truck. They all drive to the consolidation warehouse in which they are loaded then onto two trucks, um, which will be delivered to the customer. And again, on these two trucks, uh, they have a little bit of products from A, B, C, and D. Um, and the consolidation warehouse is very similar to the merging uh, transit facility. Then we have our break bulk warehouse, um, which occurs when a warehouse receives a large single shipment and arranges for delivery to multiple destinations. Very similar to consolidation, except you do not store items. Due to the fact that the long distance transportation movement is a large shipment transportation costs are lower and there is less difficulty in tracking your shipments. Um, so here we have the manufacturer and we have the low rate truckload shipment and then we have it goes to our distribution center and then the less than truckloads uh, three of them will go to customer a b and c value added processing. So before we get into uh, value added processing, I just wanted to go over the difference between a warehouse and a distribution center. Sometimes people do get them confused. Warehouses truly emphasize the storage of products and to maximize the use of the storage space. Whereas the distribution centers are mainly for the rapid movement of products through a facility and to maximize throughput or the product flow rate. And then some of the add, uh, value added processing tasks that can be at hand would be packaging and uh, packing and repacking of goods and products, labeling and identifying, putting labels on products and electro electronic barcode identification, assembly support. Assembly occurs when the products from the second tier suppliers are assembled by the warehouse close to the manufacturing plant. Reverse distribution, the return inspection and disposition, recycling of used and returned goods. And lastly, we have invoicing. Uh, you can create custom, customized invoices and it will help you keep track of various expenses. Next, we get into warehouse functionality. And one of the main functionalities of warehousing is regrouping items, which involves rearranging the quantities of products as they move through the supply chain. We have accumulating, which involves bringing together similar stocks from different sources. Allocating, bringing larger quantities into smaller quantities. Assorting refers to the buildup um, of a variety of different products for resale to the customers. Sorting is separating products into grades and quantities desired by different target markets. And lastly, we have spot stocking, which a selected amount of the firm's product line is being placed or spot stocked in a warehouse to fill customer orders 
during a critical marketing period. There are also seven types primarily of warehouses. The first one we have is a private warehouse, which are owned and operated and man uh, managed by the manufacturers or traders to store exclusively their own stock of goods. A great example would be private warehouses constructed by farmers near their fields to hold different products such as hay or even corn. And public warehouses are owned and operated by another organization, including a government agency, and only used by a company on certain terms and conditions. Government warehouses are owned, managed, and controlled by central or state governments for public corporations or local authorities. Then we have our bonded warehouse, which are owned, managed, and controlled by government, but also by private agencies. In a bonded storage in a public warehouse, products being stored have no duties or taxes paid until that product leaves the warehouse or the facility. Types of warehouses again, uh, the last three, the first one would be contract warehouses, which handles the shipping, receiving, and storage of goods on a contract basis. This type of warehousing can also be called third party warehousing. We also have our co-op warehouses, which are owned, managed, and controlled by co-op societies. And lastly, we have field warehouses, in which is an alternative for a company to rent the warehouse for a short term storage needs, rather than spending money on construction and all the costs associated with maintaining uh, primarily to hold material serving as collateral for the loan. Lastly, this is the sources page. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email. Thank you.